All right, that's it. The Rays are going undefeated, going straight to a World Series without taking a single L. All right, so realistically, that's not gonna happen. But the Rays have started 10 and 0, and this has really prompted the question, are they for real? So they got all these wins by beating absolute powerhouses in the Tigers, the Nationals, the A's. This is sarcasm, by the way. And then they just beat the Red Sox. So this would all kind of say that this 10 and 0 run isn't all that impressive. Until you look at the numbers, starting with their offense, they're fifth in average so far, the slackers, but they're first in on-base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, home runs, and WRC plus, just to name a few things. Now this great of a start would make you think that there's probably some luck involved here, but when you really dive deep, they can back up the fact that they're playing really good baseball. First, the race hitters are taking a really good approach at the plate, leading the league in strikeout percentage, and also being top 10 in walk rate and chase rate. This approach means they're not going after tough pitches out of the zone. They're getting good pitches in the zone and absolutely taking advantage of it, leading the league in barrel percentage and being top five in exit velo and hard hit percentage. So their hitters aren't going after tough pitches. They're taking advantage of the good pitches that they're getting in the zone, absolutely crushing them, and they're getting the best results possible right now. But the Rays can't just be hitting, right? They have to pitch too, to be balanced enough to go on this 10-0 run. And um, yeah, their starters are pitching. Their rotations, ERA, FIP, ERA minus, and FIP minus are all best in the league. And once again, they can back this up. They're absolutely attacking hitters right now, currently ranked third in both strikeout percentage and walk rate, leading the league in chase rate and second in whiff rate. So it's hard enough just to put the bat on the ball against these guys, let alone then to square it up and really hit it well. They lead the league also in ground ball percentage and home runs per fly ball, and they're top 10 in barrel percentage and soft contact percentage. Now, when you're pitching well and you have really good stuff, that's like best case scenario, right? They're second in stuff plus and have the best location plus in baseball. Once again, making them the best in the league according to Pitch Plus. Now their relievers are a little bit of a mixed bag here though. Currently second in ERA and ERA minus, but they're 16th in FIP and 19th in FIP minus. This is because despite the fact that they're eighth in walk percentage, they're currently 25th in strikeout rate because their relievers pitch more to contact. They're 22nd in contact percentage. But they do this really, really well. Currently leading the league in average allowed, soft contact percentage, and exit velo. Now you'd like to see them get more of this contact on the ground and on top of this. They don't really have the best stuff. They're 19th. 19th in stuff plus, 16th in location plus, and pitch plus has them as the 19th best in the league. And finally, the defense behind them has been pretty solid, 9th in defensive runs saved and 8th in outs above average, and Fangraphs has them as the 8th best defense so far this season. Now the team's success is only really going to continue if their key guys keep performing at such a high level. So what can we realistically expect from the top guys on this team? Wander Franco is currently showing more power early this year than we're used to seeing from him, but he is only 22 and his exit velo, hard hit percentage, and launch angle are all up, so maybe we're seeing him really put it together here. But for him, the big thing after missing so much time last year is really gonna come down to how much he can stay healthy this season. Randy Arozarena striking out at about half of his career average right now, but his chase rate and contact percentage are at career best. So maybe this was an approach change that he's made. He's gonna have to show that going forward and not that this was just facing bad pitching. Yandy Diaz is also showing more power than normal, but his exit velo, hard hit percentage, and launch angle are all up as well. So he's gonna have to show that this was more of a mechanical adjustment that he made and again, not just facing bad pitching. Brandon Lau's power numbers are up right now, but the fact that he's hitting pretty similar to how he normally has and his ridiculous 25% walk rate right now over double his career average and he's already a really high walk rate guy, point towards the fact that he's probably just been against really bad pitching. That's definitely gonna come down. Manny Margot put up his first season with a WRC plus 100 or higher last year 
in only 89 games and he's a career 90 WRC plus hitter. He's been mostly slugging so far, but he's not hitting the ball particularly hard. So yeah, Shane McClanahan has put up a 1.5 ERA so far, a career 286 ERA for him. And he's pitching pretty much what we're used to seeing from him, except the fact that his walk rate is noticeably higher and he's pretty good at that. So that's definitely gonna come down and this could be a case of him just getting even better. Jeffrey Springs hasn't allowed a run yet. He's a career 3-4 ERA guy. His strikeout rate and average against are way better right now than his career averages. So expect that to come down and he's not gonna finish the season without giving up a single run. Drew Rasmussen also hasn't allowed a run. He's a career 2-8-8 ERA. Also hasn't given up a walk yet. He is really good at that though, but that's definitely gonna change. His strikeout percentage and average against are way better. Just He's pitching stupid good right now. And on top of this, you have Zach Eflin, Tyler Glasnow, and Jose Siri all currently on the IL. Getting them back is definitely gonna help out this team. So yeah, are the Rays gonna fall back down to earth a little bit here? Absolutely. They're not gonna go undefeated all season. But when they do fall back down to earth, are they gonna fall out of being a legit playoff contender? I don't think so. Yeah, the numbers are pretty crazy right now in some cases, but the underlying stuff shows that the Rays are playing really, really good baseball and very well-rounded. So yes, it was against weaker competition, but they didn't just beat them. They've absolutely dominated them. Offensively, they're taking a really good approach at the plate, getting good pitches to hit and making quality contact on those pitches. That's gonna keep getting results as long as you keep doing that. Their starters have absolutely nasty stuff that's hard enough just to hit, let alone then to hit well, and they're going right at guys with this. And in the bullpen, there are some things that you like, some things that you don't, but you can't really argue with the results here. And overall for this team, they're just playing really, really good, well-rounded baseball. That's gonna carry forward. Time will only tell with this team, but I'm sure you're gonna let me know too. What do you think about the Rays? How are they doing so far? How are they going to continue doing? And come playoff time, are they gonna be legit contenders? The Rays' success so far at least makes sense. The Guardians' offense, on the other hand, continues to just baffle me. They do some things that you really don't wanna do, but they definitely have their strengths and just makes them one of the more confusing things in baseball. To learn more about that, check out this video right here. And as always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.